Hey everybody, welcome back to The Engineered Angler. Today we're gonna to talk about airbrushes, how to get started with airbrushing. Now let me qualify this discussion. I'm not an artist, I'm an engineer, but I used an airbrush and airbrush paint to put details on lures that I make and to add the colors and the patterns that I think will attract a fish to bite a lure. Now you may be getting into airbrushing because you're an artist, because you want to paint, do murals, do t-shirts, do tattoos, whatever. What I'm gonna cover in this video is not actually the technique of using a, an airbrush. We'll be covering the sort of nuts and bolts of getting into airbrushing as a beginner. I'll talk about all the equipment you'll need, the sort of space you might need to use it, some basic tips on paints, and some basic tips on first time use and cleaning. So one of the really nice things about airbrushes, it allows people like me who don't have a whole lot of artistic talent, who can't draw that great, to create effects with paint that are really difficult to do with a brush. But if you're watching this video, you've probably already convinced yourself that you wanna use an airbrush. Let's just first go over the actual equipment you're gonna need. The biggest piece of equipment you'll need is a compressor. This is a small compressor I bought probably six or eight years ago. I got it at Harbor Freight for, it was, back then it was about $65. It'll come up to about 50 PSI. It runs on regular 110 here in the US and it draws about two amps. So it'll run on any, any circuit that you have in your house. And as far as noise, it isn't totally quiet, but it's certainly not as noisy as a shop compressor. And it'll cycle on and off even when you're not using it. And it doesn't have a reservoir tank. A reservoir tank is essentially a, a small accumulator tank that usually sits under the compressor that allows the compressor to store compressed air. And that allows you to spray paint without having the compressor cycle so very often. You'll also need a feed hose. This is an extra long one. I recommend having an extra long one. This way you can set your compressor a good distance from you so it doesn't annoy you when it's cycling on and off. The compressor should have a pressure gauge and regulator so you can adjust the output pressure because typically you're going to want to paint at about somewhere between 20 and 30 psi. It should also have a little air filter a water separator and this allows the air to flow through and any moisture that's in that air will condense out and can be bled out of the bottom. I don't have that connected there because I don't use it anymore. Currently I'm using a shop compressor that runs compressed air through all my shop and I've got a localized regulator and water separator and filter. And I have a super accurate laboratory gauge that I bought from the local university. And then of course, you're gonna need an airbrush. So let's talk a little more in depth about the airbrush. So there's a few types of airbrushes and it all has to do with the way the paint gets fed into the gun itself and comes out the nozzle and the control you have on the gun itself. Now, some airbrushes are single action. In other words, there's only one movement for the trigger and that's usually just down. And how that works is when you push the button, it just allows air and paint out at the same time. Now, a double action airbrush will allow first when you push down air to come through and then when you pull back it pulls back the needle from the tip orifice the very front nozzle and allows paint to get sort of vacuumed out of your container and out onto your canvas or model or miniature or whatever it is you're painting. I don't recommend going with single action. It's very limiting. How the paint is fed into the gun itself varies with the gun. This style has the paint below the gun and it's called a siphon feed. And it works on the Venturi effect that creates a vacuum that will pull the paint up out of this little jar. There are also siphon feed guns that have a small cup that attaches to the bottom. These are a little easier to clean, but will hold a lot less paint. The more commonly used airbrushes are top fed or gravity fed airbrushes. They're easy to clean, they're easy to maintain, and they're easy to troubleshoot if you're having any issues with it. Now, there's a place for each one of these styles. If you're painting on canvas with broad strokes and using a lot of paint, these jar siphon style guns are really handy because you can just simply have different colors in different jars and just replace those as you need to change your colors. But if you're painting small stuff, this tends to be overkill. You don't need this much paint almost ever. The amount of paint you need would probably be stuck in the little siphon tube every time you use it. And that's why people use the gravity feed style. And you can see this one actually has a tiny, tiny reservoir cup. Of course, the smaller amount of paint that you need to use each time you spray, the smaller the cup you wanna have. This way you waste less paint and it's easier to clean. It's also a little lighter in the hand. The other things to take into consideration as you're using it is your angle of use, right? Basically, if you're, if you're painting out of position, if you're painting up onto something or straight down onto something, the angle of the little reservoir and the size of the reservoir might cause a problem with spillage or the gun actually drawing air instead of paint. Now, an alternative would be this 
side draw gravity feed gun. And what this does for you is it gives you a slightly larger reservoir, but it also allows you to change the angle of that reservoir. So if you're painting straight down, you can position that reservoir so you will never get any spillage. Now there's gonna be some other accessories you're gonna wanna have. Items that you use to clean your airbrush and items that you use to blow out your airbrush. And you can find all that stuff online. And in fact, I've created a list for tools and airbrush gear, and I've put that list on my Amazon store. What I try to do is find really good bargains that will actually work for people, and I put them on those lists. Those are things that I actually have bought myself and think they're worth the purchase. Another thing that's nice to have is quick connect fittings. These are really inexpensive. They come with a female that has a small valve and the male that goes on the end user part, the gun, and you slide it on this way. You don't have to turn off your compressor and you don't have to disconnect your hose from the compressor to be able to change guns. So the other aspect of deciding what kind of airbrush you want to buy is how large a diameter needle and nozzle you're going to want to use in your airbrush. Now most airbrush manufacturers will sell you these things separately so that you can change them out in the gun that you have or you can purchase a kit that has a number of sizes and that's what I've done with a couple of these. Now the typical sizes for both the needles and the nozzles start off at 0.2 millimeters and then move up to 0.3 millimeters and then it jumps to 0.5 millimeters. But of course there are smaller sizes and larger sizes, but those are a little more of a specialty. So let's pull the needle and the nozzle out of this one so you can see what I'm talking about. This needle is a 0.3 millimeter. And the nozzle will be contained underneath the spray cap here. And typically you'll need a little wrench to pull this off. And if you look very closely, the very tip of that cone, which on this gun actually will come out, that tiny little tip there is what unscrews and is responsible for controlling the minimum diameter of the spray pattern of your paint. And if I insert the needle in it, you can see that it actually extends out past the nozzle. And when it's pressed in there, it seals any paint from coming out. When you pull back on it with the trigger, it opens that nozzle and allows paint to flow through. All right, so let's, let's look at this other one here, which has a slightly different architecture. And the nozzle gets screwed into the fixed part of the body. I'm hoping you can see the needle how it extends and then retracts with the movement of the trigger. So let's talk a little bit about the price of getting into this, just on the basic level. A basic compressor setup is gonna cost you anywhere between about $80 to close to $300, depending on how much you wanna splurge. If this is your first time getting airbrush equipment, I would go ahead and buy entry level stuff. Something that's gonna work for you for at least a year or two, and something that you can grow out of and grow bored of and not be out a bunch of money. So I found a few options and I put it on the Amazon store, and you can get into a decent compressor with a volume tank on it for right around $100. An entry level gun from anywhere from $16 to $30 to $40. And again, the price of airbrushes, pretty much the sky's the limit. There's some airbrush that run well up into the many hundreds of dollars. When you purchase an airbrush that only costs you $25, $35, or $40, it'll work well, and it'll work well for a good long time if it's well taken care of. As you can see, I have kind of an elaborate setup. I built this whole shop with lure making and lure painting in mind. And so I included this paint booth. I've got lighting that I like, and I've got an extractor fan. I think you can hear that. It's a bit loud, but it has a lot of suction. Making your own small portable spray hood is not a big deal, or you can purchase one pretty inexpensively. I've found a few and I put them on the Amazon store and they seem adequate, especially if you're in an apartment and you're not gonna be in an open air environment like maybe a garage or a back patio or something. Of course, if you're gonna be painting, wearing a painting mask, a respirator is a really good idea. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of paint. This is just black opaque paint. When you press the nozzle, nothing comes out unless I pull back on the trigger. And the proper technique is to hold the air on at all times and then slowly pull back the trigger until you start getting paint. If you, as I do most of the time, press and draw, if you've ever painted a car, you were trained to do it this way. If you do that, you have a likelihood of getting a lot of spatter. So it's a good idea to keep that air pressed. Then you can make very nice control dots or lines. Those lines can be nice and crisp, or if you pull away and move fast, they can be a little fuzzy. The farther away you are, the broader that paint stripe is gonna be, and more diffused the paint will be. And the closer you get, the finer the lines you can make. And when you're changing paint, 
you want to spray out all the paint that you have in there. There are spray out bottles that you insert your nozzle into and just spray all the paint out. It allows the paint to settle down in the bottom and catches any of the vapors before they come out. But in lieu of that, that's just one more thing sitting on my counter. I just spray into a paper towel. And then you can just spray some water in your reservoir from a little water bottle. And from here, I'll work over my sink. But you could work over a bowl or some sort of Tupperware container just to contain all the dirty water. And I, what I like to do is just take a disposable brush and use it as my cleaning brush. It's a soft bristle brush, but nothing fancy. I'll fill that reservoir with water and empty it several times. And then if you block the nozzle and, and let a little air out, you'll see a little back pressure and bubble back. And that'll take the paint that stuck forward of the reservoir back into the reservoir and help you clean it out. And you want to do that three or four times until the water stops showing paint coming back into it. And that looks pretty clear now. At that point, you can start spraying water through the nozzle. And then the next step is to pull the needle out itself. And then you want to wipe that needle nice and clean, always pushing towards the pointy end and not the other way around because you'll end up embedding it in your hand. While the needle is out, you can blow a little bit of water through. And now this gun could be either put away or is ready for the next color. Now for deeper cleaning once in a very long while, I'll take out my ultrasonic cleaning machine. And basically this is just a little vat that you can add water or alcohol. I usually use alcohol. There's a little basket for parts and even a smaller basket for smaller parts. And I'll run this for about a couple hours and it really does deep clean the guns really well. And I can do two or three of them at a time. I made an entire video on using this and I'll put a link to it up here above me. So we can talk a little bit about paints. Now paints, of course, are gonna depend a lot on what it is you're painting. But if you're painting miniatures or models or lures like I do, typically you're gonna use a water-based paint. But if you're unsure of your own skills, it's not a bad idea to start with kind of less expensive paint. Now, I would not buy super cheap paints. It actually slow your progress. But a good place to start are Createx paints. The only problem with Createx paints is that you do have to thin them and that's another art in itself. If you want paints that are gonna paint right out of the bottle that you purchase it, Tester's paints are real nice and they're not that expensive. Badger paints are very good paints and they're also moderately priced. They're really easy to paint and they have some really nice color tones and also spray right out of the bottle. But if you're willing to pay a little extra, you can look for golden paints. I've bought them when I found them on sale and they paint beautifully. And as you're making your decision on what paints to buy, of course, every paint manufacturer is gonna have a different palette. Some are pearlized, some are transparent, some are metalized or metallic. I would say that at the beginning at least, I would shy away from oil-based paints. They're more difficult to use because they're more complicated to thin, more difficult to clean your gun, and they're a little more hazardous as far as breathing in vapors and flammability issues. But there are also some alcohol-based paints that are a little safer, a little easier to clean up, and have some really vibrant colors. You might want to check those out before you go with oil paints. All right, well, I hope that this information was useful. If you're just getting started with airbrushes and you've already learned some things that you think are some good tips to share with with the folks watching these videos, certainly put them in the comments. I would love to see them. All right, well, we'll leave it there. And next week, hopefully, we'll be building lures again. I'll see you guys next Friday. Yeah, my lucky engineered angler hat is being washed. So no, I'm not bald yet.